I'd love to catch you. I'd love to go back and watch the stream, bud, if you were playing on stream. That's awesome. I like that when Jesus came back, he decided to chill and collect guitars and play some chess. I went to a social function um, at my, at, at my, uh, for my department, for my PhD program recently, um, and I hadn't seen people for a while because Corona. Uh, and there was like a, an impromptu petition uh, that various acquaintances um, bandwagoned into for me to rebrand my online persona as um, Quantum Jesus. Um, but, you know, I, I told them that the Samantha Turk brand is already established. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I'll find a way to incorporate it. All right. Big, big, big GLHF going out to Aqua Baby. Here we go. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. Just played my League Cup game of Reverse Royalty. <sighs> so we're not going to do anything too crazy. Um... We're just gonna do it, man. We're just gonna do it live. We're gonna do it live. We're gonna start with uh, Knight C3. Uh, Knight C3 because not that F7 stacks are actually an issue in reverse royalty per se, but um, by the way, for anyone joining who doesn't watch too much 5D chess or play too much, this format is called reversed royalty. Um, it is a fantastic game mode where the piece which you are attempting to checkmate is the queen rather than the king and Dom's it show just subscribe. Dom, thank you so much. They, man, he's been priming for, for months, four months streak. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support, man. I, I really feel the love. Um, man, Dom's too nice. He's getting me distracted. Uh, what was I about to say? Right, um, in reverse royalty, uh, you're attempting to checkmate the piece that moves like a queen. It's called the royal queen. The common king, you'll see uh, the, the piece where the king is supposed to be um, is kind of gimped. It's kind of lame. Uh, let me think here. What am I? Okay, I think probably f7 is going to get targeted by that bishop, in which case we'll push d3 no problem. But right now, I'm just going to go g3 or uh, g3, prepare, uh, prepare a frappuccino. Um, right, so the common king is a piece that just moves like a king, but it can be captured, no issue. It's like any other, it's like any other piece. Okay, here we block the route to F, uh, or to, to C2, sorry, force of habit. Um, it is much easier in this game mode, it's got to be said, um, to checkmate a piece that has more mobility because of the 5D mechanics of the game. So uh, if this were regular chess, then attempting to checkmate the queen would obviously be like way, way more difficult um, of a task. Here, it's interesting because the queen in 5D chess is of course a like disproportionately strong piece compared to its 2D chess counterpart. Like it's very good, even better. I mean, it's, you know, it's great in 2D chess, but hold that thought, okay. There's no way that I can really take advantage of this open diagonal, I don't think. Um, what is the purpose of this? Center control gives my knight an outpost. Um, Alright, so we don't have a queen that can take, uh, we don't have a piece that can take advantage of the triagonal. Um, Give me a check here, developing our bishop with tempo is probably okay. Um, I don't know, let me think. What am I doing with this pawn? Not a whole lot. Um, I could honestly kick the bishop on f5 with an e4. I mean, I'm not in love with an early e4. This is after all 5d chess. Um, but it's got to be said, man, that is wacky. It's wacky because F7 is undefended because the common king moved. So actually, 
I could always threaten. Hmm. Uh, I could always threaten f7 with a with a cheeky knight g5. Uh, what does he do? Probably drops the bishop back. I'm probably happy about that. Yeah. Especially because it opens the eyes of this bishop. Uh, I mean, I really want to develop my pieces. I don't want to rush into anything. But the thing is, even if he moves here, then uh, I'm going to go with my instincts. I do need to be very careful. Um, I did play a little bit of 2D chess this week and, and, and a little bit of Chess Evolved Online. So I don't want to... Um, it's, it's funny that he tried to take that because it's obviously not legal. And if even if it were completely undefended, taking it would be a terrible idea. Um, but, um, yeah, so what's interesting is that the queen is by far, like, the most powerful piece in terms of being able to transverse, you know, like, the 5D, the, the, the multiverse, as it were. Um, it has access to triagonals and quadragonals. Um, and so it's really like deeply interesting to have the strongest by far offensive piece also be, uh, the piece, which, you know, is the one that you have to defend. So it, it makes for these really super interesting, like risk reward situations where, uh, if there's like a, if there's like a brief opportunity, that's what I thought he would do. Um, for like um like a, a crazy checkmate then um you have to ask yourself one question are you feeling lucky punk uh sorry i, I don't know where the the random dirty harry came from but um yeah you you have to sort of contend with yourself like okay uh am i going to be able to use my queen to mate his queen before I get got. Um, I mean, okay, so I am... Um, listen, 5G chess is a volatile game. There are a lot of early tactics. There are a lot of early, you know, attacking opportunities. Um, that are important to identify, but simultaneously... You know, I like to play reverse royalty slow. I like to develop my pieces. I like to, you know, wait for the opportunity to strike. But here, I can't help but think that this bishop is the correct piece to play next. Um, either to d5 or to h3. Uh, h3, obviously, well, okay, non-obviously, if you don't know the game. I was, I'm just aware of, like, a few of our new viewers um, who haven't seen the game before, but... Bishop h3 threatens forced mate. Why is that? Uh, if the bishop captures the common king here, then it is a forced recapture because it threatens the royal queen one turn in the past. Um, and then if the royal queen recaptures, uh, then knight d5 is actually immediate mate um, because it will attack the royal queen one turn in the past. d5 is obviously a weakness in its structure. It's undefended. Do we go for that? What's his response? It does place a lot of pressure on him. Um, it does place a lot of pressure on him. Uh, what am I afraid of? Like, why wouldn't I do this right now? Um, it's going to give me a... Dev okay, so what can he do? Pushes this pawn up. Um, pushes this pawn up. Then we have knight out here. Um... Right? Pawn up is pretty spooky for him. Boom, knight out here. What's the follow up? It does really tie down. You know what? We're going to moon first, sink later. That is our mantra on the stream. Um, moon first, sink later. I wasted a lot of time on that. I'm on that play, but. I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling aggro. It's because his light squares are really difficult to defend here. Um, his pieces are just just a little awkwardly placed. Uh, you know, like 
both of his knights are on light squares right now, so they can't block. All I can do is push that pawn up. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see, let's see. What incarnation am I looking at? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot to take in at first. Um, he was rather easy on exams. Message from our group chat before an exam. I've met Jesus. He promised to come tomorrow. By the way, Aqua Baby beat Mage, so be careful. Ooh, very well done to our opponent. Mage is, uh, Mage is no slouch, so Aqua Baby beating Mage. That's pretty good. That's a big deal. Let's not disturb the man, but can someone in chat explain what's the deal with all these other boards? Um, I would love nothing more than to actually go into that, like bit by bit and just go into tutorialize this for you. Uh, but I feel like if I start, then it's going to really, I'm going to have difficulty transitioning into actually having to play the game. So for my own well-being, um, I'm going to let chat take it away. Um, that's the past. You can travel to the past if you want to. Meaning you undo or create a second game of chess you play at the same time. It's the second game of chess, AKA a second timeline. So if you make a, if you make a move where you place a piece into the past on a board where it was your turn, then suddenly your piece disappears from where it just moved from. And a new board appears uh, from the place you traveled to with that piece on it. And then you play that game of chess, but crucially pieces can move between timelines as well. So like the parallel timelines influence each other. It's, it's crazy shit, it's fantastic. Okay, this is the move that I thought was his only move. Um, and uh, my response in the moment was a confident, we can just play knight d5. Um, do I still agree with my own assessment that we can just play knight d5? It's a tricky question. Uh, my intuition tells me knight d5 is the move to play. Um, what do we do? Well, we open up. I mean, you always got to worry about moving the c knight in this position, usually f knight, because um, you open up c2. But travel to c2 isn't actually all that scary right now. Um, maybe we can be a little critical of his position and try to just crack it open because uh, if this pawn this pawn can't move if this pawn moves we win uh, it is that simple uh, and I don't want to do it with this pawn obviously because if it moves then my pawn is stuck there blocking um, actually this that might be a good no because we need this to actually deliver mate so we're just going to play e4 kicking this pawn and we'll just see what he do um, we'll see what he do we'll see what he do um, but I think we are poised advantageously. Um, yeah, it, what's, what's really working in our favor here, you might think, okay, well, you just opened up your, you know, kingside diagonal, so what's the big deal? Well, uh, our bishops are both incredibly active. Um, his bishop has not been able to develop and will not be able to develop. If this pawn moves, that's terrible for him for reasons that any, you know, um, experienced 5D chess player can tell you. Uh, and this is just isn't going anywhere. This piece just isn't moving. It's just not. Um, might even have to move his royal queen here. I don't really see, like, the best way that he can defend. Um, I think we found a, a decently critical line. I do, I mean, there is, like, a crazy... Whoa, but doesn't he know that I don't care about that at all? Uh, I think we take with the pawn here. Oh, um, if he takes, then right. So we need to open this up like immediately. Ah, so that's clever. That's clever. Okay, so the deal here is that um, if he takes 
our knight with this pawn, then our bishop is susceptible to the rook. So we can't take with the pawn here. Um, we just can't do it. Uh, what can we do? We can check him here, then capture with the pawn here. Now we're committing an entire piece to this operation, potentially. Um, I, I would assume um, that he, you know, the best move there is to just capture. Uh, and that's spooky. I don't want to do this because I want this common king to be placed exactly where it's placed. The fact that this is a check and a fork threatening to win a piece uh, really works in our favor. Um, the thing is, after check here, undefending this pawn, what do our opponent do? Um... Because then he doesn't have the rook. I, I basically prevent him from activating the rook or the knight, for that matter, realistically. Um, if he takes, then um, I can take here, right? Uh, and then there's no way for him to prevent. He could move his common king out, and it would be defended by the bishop in that situation. Um, so it's good that we identified that. Um, what are other options? The... I mean, you might think, okay, well, if you don't want to dilly-dally and take the bishop off here, then why not take it now? The only problem with taking it right now is that... Um, the only problem with taking it right now is that he recaptures, and we recapture, and then he captures. And then how do we convert? Question mark. Uh, can we actually do anything by forcing this um, bishop takes here, takes here. Oh, then we could check and force the queen to move and f7 would no longer be defended. Uh, and we would win a piece, but we wouldn't win the game immediately. Hmm... Hard to tell, hard to tell what's better. Here, because here we don't sack a piece. What does he do in response to this? He probably has to move. Oh, we can't, no we can't because the, okay. I was just thinking if we trade here and then check here, then we can travel onto this bishop two turns in the past. The only issue is, which would check him on the other timeline. The only issue is that on board, the queen can just recapture. Um, and although we would have a knight here. So hold on. Can we actually mate off of there? Uh, can we actually mate off of there? So take, takes, check. Literally anything happens. Uh, and then we take here two turns in the past. Um, then the queen forced only legal move captures here, and we would go on to this board, right? So boom, and then we have our next board where this is taken. Boom, our next board where it's checked. So we would go back to here with the knight on this um, Square. So we would be on this board of the knight here, and then this would recapture. Right. Then we have check, or, you know, we have like delay until this happens. I suppose we could do this, but then he blocks the diagonal. Um, probably actually we just move our knight in in that situation. That seems very promising to me. Uh, actually, I, it is investing a lot into an attack that may or may not pan out. Um, the bishop here isn't like guaranteed mate. Uh, then again, this diagonal will prop. If I have if I have a piece here, then I can always okay that convinces me. All right, here we take. Uh, we take here. We take here all day, er day. I mean, he will have a second timeline uh, with which to defend, um, but I think that we spent way too long thinking about that and we just have to commit. 
we're committed. We're pot committed, chat. We're going to try and make this work no matter how this shakes out. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he somehow, maybe he just lets us go. Maybe he pulls bishop back because he gets spooked, you know, and then we just have the, well, obviously he's not going to hang the bishop um, and just let me win. But, you know, like bishop all the way back here, uh, you know, actually means that this isn't forced mate. So that's nice. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe he won't take here. Um, I don't know what he does. It's looking good for us. It's looking good. This has been a sharp, quick... I mean, I'm always skeptical is the thing, because you never want to be too gung-ho, especially when there's a game... It's a game of stakes, you know? You don't want to, like, go all in on, like, a tactical idea that you haven't really explored before. Um, and, and it's possible that it's actually just obviously winning. Um, it's, it's actually possible, but... Like I said before, not to make excuses for myself, but... I'm I'm hella tired, man. Like I am I'm dying. Uh, I've really had to pick myself up to be like, okay, we're gonna go live. All right, wake up. Let's let's put on a show here. So so yeah, I've completely lost track of chat. Um, I I think probably until this game's over, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back and attempt to catch up. I'm just gonna try and. I'm just going to like cover and recover my tracks here uh, and try and consider like the implications of having the second board um, to play around with. Wow. You crazy son of a bitch. He hung his bishop. You don't look a gift bishop in the mouth. That's what my grandfather always told me. Uh, I guess we just take here. So obviously this prevents both of the strategies that I was just talking about because the common king just defends everything. But we must win immediately. Then again, we hang the knight. Um, so it's not a free bishop. Maybe here... Checking like this is actually genuinely the play. Am I going nuts? Because if he takes, then we take. No, but then he just goes back. Um, right? Takes, takes. 5D brain. 5D brain. Go. 5D brain. Make tactics happen. Come on. I don't want him to open. Am I just going to go for this? He's in check, so he has to respond. Uh, if he moves the queen, he can't move it here, probably, because then I have immediate mate. Um, can't move it here, because then we have mate. Uh, so he's probably got to move it here, or take is more likely. Then we take here, and then we worry about it later. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. We're just going to check him. Yep. Takes there, and then we takes here. Uh, and then we figure it out in, uh, momentarily here. I mean, if he doesn't cover the square now that the common king is gone, we have the forced mate. Uh, we really do. Um, so he's got to do something like knight out here works. Uh, probably bishop back there works. Don't get me wrong. We are in a much better position uh, than our opponent. Um, I, I think that this is really good for us. We'd love to see it. Um, okay, so our opponent hurt us. Um, he decides to he decides to push the knight out. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Now we have to figure out how to convert off of this. Um, Maybe we play slow, maybe we push the... It'd be fantastic if we could kick this piece somehow. Uh, that's the dream, is kicking is kicking this knight. Because if we kick the knight, we've actually won. I don't want to tunnel vision uh, in, in that particular way. Um, I don't want to, you know, 
just go like crazy. We could kick it with the knight, but the knight is the piece, the crucial piece that we need to actually win the game. So um, it's fantastic that we got the common king out of there, but now we got to get this knight out of there. I mean, listen, naively, you know, I, I like just pushing this. Uh, I really do. Um, uh, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Um, let's figure it out. I really do just love the idea of pushing this. Um, you know what? Moon first, sink subsequently. Uh, let's just hang the pawn. Oh no, my pawn. Oh shit. Uh, you know what do? Um, yeah, when in doubt, just march. March the pawn forward, man. Nothing, nothing else to be said. Um, you know, I my hope is that he takes here thinking, haha. I mean, okay. The, our bishop is covering, so actually, it, it's defended. Uh, obviously, the queen doesn't count, right? Um, so, but he can't even take because we just take with the bishop. So it's not even like oh, an oh no, my pawn situation. Um, Next turn, though, I'm liking the idea of just push this bad boy. Uh, and if takes, you pin, then you can sack. All you need is to remove defenders, you know? And listen, I know that I'm going all in on this situation here. Um, but I, I, I think it will work out for us. I'm hopeful. And we've spent too much time on it in any case. So we're, you know, we, we're, we're committed at this point. Um, we just got to go with it. We just got to go with it. Um, also, when our pawns are nice and whoa, now this is an issue. He is threatening our bishop, however. It's not that big a deal because we can see seven sec. Uh, now, let me allow me to be to just exercise as much care as is possible because I don't want to get got. Um, travel here. I mean, it's singly defended. Uh, technically doubly but whatever um i think if any travel happens we're actually in good shape because we have some counter travels maybe um here we probably want to move our bishop back to here right uh which poises it for a capture anyway um uh, or for a travel anyway um I mean, C2 is singly defended. It's possible that I need to be careful, but uh, I'm just going to move. Moon first. Moon first. Sink later. He can't challenge it with his bishop right now. Um, our own knight is here. Um, holding down the fort. Uh, it would be fantastic if we had like our common king developed but listen this like this is the this is like the circle of life in 5d chess is um you go aggressive you overextend and you give your opponent opportunities for counterplay right uh and i mean to our opponent's credit he was very resourceful um you know it, it's now reasonably difficult uh for us to probably what i do next is I think threaten this knight. Um, just get it the hell out of there, you know. I mean, the only defender of c2 here is our royal queen, but we've got pieces on the f-file, and it's going to be really difficult for him to get to this triagonal or to back rank us, so I'm not super duper worried about it. Um, we have used up a lot of our time. We used up a lot of our time. So we... Let me think. Um... What do we do if we sack on this 
board. That's really spooky for him, right? His, his knights are actually defending super well, um, frustratingly. So does he have to take? Where else can he go? He probably has to take, because if the bishop is here, then he can't move here. I mean, he could always exile. Um, could always exile. But then, you know, if he exiles the queen, it might just be okay for us if you force an exile. Um, let's say that he does have to capture. I mean, if he stays on the board, then that's super rough. Like, basically, the only place he can go is here, right? And then we... Um, probably do one of these. Alternatively, we could check him here, but probably one of these. Or we could check him like this on the other board or like this on the other board. I don't know. We have options. I'll figure it out later. Um, oh, he actually, the mad lad, played c5, um, which is weird. It's a very weird move. It blocks the travels, but it does open up our opponent to some wacky shit. Um, so question is what we do here. Um... What is the best plan of attack? Um, I think kicking this knight is probably, realistically speaking, step one. I wonder what the best way to do that is. Um, I wonder what the best way to do that is. We can also maybe... This is still defended by this bishop, but it's just singly defended suddenly, so... Uh, that is certainly a resource that we have. We have to defend our pieces and we have to not flag that. That part's crucial. So um, knight here. And I don't think that we can take with our... Uh, does he threaten some travels? I'm not sure what he threatens. Um, but I think we probably play this and just see what he does. Uh, just to get our pieces out there, just to develop. Um, it's possible that he takes with the knight here. Uh, I'm actually not super, super duper worried about that. Mm. If he takes with the knight here, that undefends a few crucial squares. I mean, like this one in particular. If we can get this knight out of here, then we can do some fancy stuff actually where we go knight here and then we have a crazy travel where we go like boom boom two turns into the past where this knight is defending itself here force bishop recapture then mate actually but when that mate happens it's possible that well okay actually the queen can recapture itself but you know then this is mate or whatever um but when that happens, it's possible that the pawn will be able to recapture itself, but then you have a, you know, like a phase through mate or whatever you want to call it. Um, something like that. Also, if we kick this knight out, we can maybe start to think about... Here, I need to... I, I, need, I need thinking time. Um, if here, do we capture? Okay, that is what I expected to happen now. Where does this knight go? It goes to these places. Um, it goes to, okay, here, I guess we go knight up, right? A turn in the past, move here, a turn in the past here, two turns in the past here. Uh, let's just go for it. This is just, this is the first move to come to mind and I really want to be very careful about my time. Mm, okay. Uh, in a turn, um, I can capture whatever's here, but also right now I can block with the common king, uh, which I was also defended by the common king up in the future. So we block with the knight or common king, knight or common king. Um, maybe the knight is better. Uh, we're 
maybe the knight is better to trade with. Uh, in instinct tells me knight. Instinct tells me knight. Um, next turn, we can capture this bishop with this pawn. Um, we can also probably work on... Uh, okay, here we probably capture like this. Very obvious move. Very obvious move. Um, we need to not waste time. We need to we need to blitz out the next few moves, um, and come up with a, and come up with a good game plan. This has weakened so many of the squares in his camp. Uh, that's kind of fantastic for us. The fact that this knight is gone is actually really good. Um, there's a lot of jumping back and forth that we can do now. Uh, I've missed the window to capture with the pawn, but I mean, say la vie. What are you gonna do? Can't can't win them all. Can't win them all. Um, I do need to preempt his movement though. Uh, we're just gonna take here. I know this seems crazy, but we're just gonna take here so that we can take here. Um, and hopefully we can cover our tracks. Uh, what can I say? Um, there is an interesting here, but it's covered thankfully by this common king. Um, so now there are lots of paths that are open to his side of the board um getting a bishop here feels really good because then after take it forces recapture uh and maybe we can play off of that probably knight out here is the move on this board and bishop out here is the move on this board um i can capture that knight uh with my common king on this board i don't know if he realizes that um and it would help to close up the diagonal or the triagonal as well um but let's see let's see let's see i don't want to make very many cross timeline moves but i mean if i have to then i have no choice that's just the that's just the way of things um i'll take peace advantage uh I have to be careful about cross timeline attacks though. Like this check here is like just a little bit annoying, not fantastically annoying, but wow, what? That's, it's crazy to me that he does that. Oh, so then he can hop this in as well. Maybe that's the idea. Uh, no, he takes it back. Um, he decides, he decides that was a bad idea. He decides against it. I mean, if he moves, then I do actually have a mating square here maybe. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Very interesting. Very interesting way that this has all panned out here. Um, here, here probably we do just sack the bishop. Here, uh, I think we just, I mean, we could probably even ignore it, to be honest, except for the fact that he threatens mate on this board, so we do have to worry about that a little bit. Um, just a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe move the rook over as the play in that case. Um, just so that the only thing guarding this as like a mating square isn't, you know. But then he could, then he tra has to travel in order to make that a possibility and he doesn't have a timeline. Um, he doesn't have a timeline with which to do that. So I'm not super worried about it. Um, so that would be a reason to not ignore this, I suppose. Um, I would just take it on the spot. Um, our opponent's using a lot of time. We're coming up on equal. I say that. He's got almost twice as much time as I do, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's equal time. Um, we do have a good, like, bishop capture, like, bishop sack into this is actually very good. Um, uh, so that feels nice. Okay, here we, m I'm sure we have to capture that just so that we don't lose immediately to this, right? But it's possible that this happens. Oh, wow, interesting. Okay, so here we take here because I'm not about to lose to some crazy bullshit. Uh, and we probably go uh, here because moon first, yeah? Uh, and that takes away this square from his knight, crucially, uh, and this square. We dominate his knight and we threaten capturing here, which is like pseudo, um, you know, mate it's like a one step away from mate uh it's like 
mate decremented, mate minus minus. Um, I mean, this um, this knight does block, um, d does defend that square, but you know, hey, whatever. Um, it also isn't lost on me that we could potentially get in some very interesting checks here. I mean, the royal queen is just wide, wide open. We've got so much. I mean, okay, let's step back and just appreciate the amount of peace advantage, like the sheer magnitude of our peace advantage right now. Um, I think that we've played this very decently from that perspective of just surviving, you know, and not being too... We're down a knight up here, but we're up a bishop, uh, a knight, and a common king here. Um, and we're up a timeline, uh, and that's a very big deal. Of course, that is a very big deal. Um, interesting that that has happened. Uh, we could potentially just capture that bishop but honestly, well, we don't want it to sack. Then again, if it sacks, we can always recapture here with this knight or this bishop, right? So I think that I'm just going to threaten some mates. Oh, he does threaten to capture that bishop upstairs. Um, he does threaten to capture that bishop upstairs. So what can we do about that? Do I? No, I don't give a shit about that. I, why would I ever give a fuck about that? Uh, why would I ever give a fuck about that? That's crazy. That's crazy business. Um, well, okay, maybe I should give a little bit of a fuck about that. I was in my previous statement. Uh, I, I recognize why I should give a fuck about that. But I just think it is better um, for us to be in this position. Um, now, okay, we can just take here with this pawn just like that. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Um, that's interesting because we're in check up here. Okay, so the obvious move is, well, we can either take with the bishop or with the common king. Uh, let's take with the common king and let's give up this piece for now. Uh, right? I mean, it will come back later. Um, I think it's all good. Uh, yeah, I don't mind so much that we lose that piece. Um... I don't mind so much that we lose that piece. Uh, here, we can take here in response. Okay, so he does take the bishop, uh, which is interesting. Okay, no he doesn't. He just takes there, um, which is okay. Uh, here, I mean, it's a reasonable question to ask whether we... Oh, wow. Wait, what? Okay. Um, let's come up with a good... Uh, tch -tch -tch. Okay, here... Uh, I really want to take this pawn right here. Uh, and so I think that it is a good play to do this. And also potentially to simply capture this pawn. Why not? Okay. <sighs> okay. All right. That rook is a little bit annoying. Um, could be worse. Could be much, much worse. Uh, the only thing that this is defended by is that bishop right there. So maybe we take here and we move our own rook over. Um, maybe that's how we play this. If he opens this up, it's all but suicide. I, what I really want to do is somehow get at this bishop. Um, if I could prevent this bishop from defending this square, then we would have some very, very good moves on our hands. Very good moves indeed. Um, whoa, okay, so he straight up takes right there. Uh, that's kind of wild. Okay, so now um, I can capture this rook here, and then when he does the same thing upstairs, um, if he does this, then I can capture with the other bishop here. We're just going up material. 
I'm sure that there's a win at some point, but the d6 pawn is like at every single point in time defended by that bishop. Uh, so that is frustrating. And the one on this board is defended by that knight. So um, still no open diagonals or anything like super obvious that we can exploit. Uh, okay, so now I think that we capture here uh, like this. Um, and that opens the eyes of this rook, which is very helpful for us. I can't believe that this d pawn is still like in existence. That's just absolutely wild to me. Okay, uh, our prayers have been answered, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if we check here like this, then we can grab that piece uh, from here and hopefully I don't lose. Let me make sure that I'm not losing going here, then I can recapture the going there. He can't check me. Let's just do this. Let's just do this. Um, that's a check. That's a check. Uh, okay, fantastic. I believe that we just won the game. Um, if that if that's his move. I mean, I think we've probably, unless I flag, I think we've won the game anyway. Um, I wonder if he sees it or if he does not see it. Uh, I do have to be careful here. I wonder if he's gonna put me in check. I can always check him uh, to like buy myself a turn if I need a turn. Um, I can also, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about this, all things considered. Uh, okay, fantastic. We just won the game. Okay, whew. All right. All right, we didn't get a free win. I would not describe that as a free win at all. We really had to work for it. I think that from the very beginning of the game, we had like a very dominant position, but it was very non-trivial to convert. And it was like the game ended at the stroke of midnight UTC. <laughs> so it was like the last possible second. Like if I had actually flagged instead of ended the game, we, like it would have been past the deadline. I mean, it would probably still have counted because we started before the tournament closed, but holy shit, we got there. Okay, um, wow, GG, GG to Aqua Baby. Uh, first and foremost, I'm incredibly proud of myself for not flagging. I, all of the ingredients were there there was pressure, there were incredibly complicated tactics that I could have spent hours poring over, and in fact wanted to. Uh, there, were, we, there were a lot of like looming um, weaknesses in our own position. I barely got sleep last night and I'm exhausted from a long day of work and also my meds just wearing off. So like all of the ingredients were there for me to just shut off and flag and I didn't. And that is character growth. Uh, ladies and gents, I mean, for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, I think that this is a, this is a bit of a, you know, like a, like a keystone moment. Um, good stuff. I'm happy with our play. Um, at the end, I think that it was a little tactically dubious on our part at times like i certainly believe with all my heart that there was a cleaner way to convert this um because we were pretty gung-ho about like the way that we um the the way that we um uh exchanged our pieces but i really think that like a lot of my a lot of my thought process um, revolved around A, the common king being an incredibly uh, like instrumental defensive tool in uh, reverse royalty. So getting that off the board, trading it for, what did I trade it for? I think I traded a knight for it, um, which you know, you might be like, but why? I, I'm very happy that I did that in hindsight, that I feel like validated um, or vindicated, whichever you prefer. Um, and the dark square bishop, the entire game, I was staring at that dark square bishop. I don't know the extent to which I vocalized this, but the fact that it was the sole defender of d6 basically meant 
that that piece didn't exist. And that as soon as the F file opened up and I could trade for it, I was, I was in there, I was ready to do that. It made a bunch of travels impossible. It made a bunch of like, it was just really difficult to, um, to work around it. Uh, I think we did a good job converting like material advantage uh, to an actual win, which can be really difficult to do in um, 5D chess. Um, we did have some pretty juicy tactics at some point after forcing the queen to move, I think um, maybe, well, okay, actually it doesn't quite work because uh, I would have to get to here. I was thinking, okay, well, at the opportune moment, we push uh, c4 and then go queen b3, but um, it doesn't quite work. Well, not only because it's like doubly attacked, triply attacked, but because if I move c3, then the next turn I would have to move to a2. So actually there isn't like a super easy uh, like trigonal mate there. But maybe, maybe I could route this other queen around. I don't know. Uh, didn't seem too hard to convert. Um, I'm just glad it's over. I there's so much chat I have to I have to catch up on. Um, let me let me uh, let, let let me let me let me congratulate my opponent or, or give him give him a solid GG. Um, uh, I feel like that was super close. Um, the travel had me so spooked and defensive, even if it didn't pan out. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, listen, we didn't, we actually didn't end up even using timeline priority. Um, to uh, to win the game, um, but you know the fact that we look at all these cross timeline captures, um, especially with the common king. By the way, this shows you how like this single. This is like the hero common king um, that just holds down the fort on both of these boards. Absolute monster. We had one capture, two capture, three captures four captures uh, cross timeline, um, which really, you know, which ordinarily is like, oh no, you know, you're like losing tempo, but it actually worked in our favor. Uh, whew. That was a solid game. That was a solid game. I feel like that was a good balance of, like neither player got steamrolled. You know, I feel like um, there were moments in which it looks like our game plan, there were like chinks in the armor. Um, but I, I think one thing that it does demonstrate is like the importance of um, just the early development, like, you know, getting both of your bishops online. You know, like the fact that this, um, the fact that this knight got in here, like the common king's important to develop, but obviously it serves like a very important role in this position, you know, like covering f7. Uh, I mean, famously, f7 is weak because in regular chess, it's only defended by the regular king. Uh, and so in this variant, it's only the common king. Um, and so you place less emphasis on it, but it's important not to forget that like f7 is a weakness uh, inherently. Uh, and I think that that structural weakness, yeah, we were able to exploit like, yes, this bishop got developed, which was fine. I mean, along a diagonal that we, it was kind of trivial first to close, mind you, but um, you know, we put the pressure on here and forced him back. And as soon as this bishop clunked into place, it was like, okay, well, this bishop is never going to see the light of day. Uh, and in fact, it didn't for a solid, well, that wasn't a super long game, but you know, like 24 turns or whatever is like when the bishops first got, you know, first got out of their pen. Whew. Glad we found the mate under pressure. I mean, it's because we did a bunch of work looking for it beforehand. Um, but it wouldn't have been mate if we didn't, you know, like actually, um, you know, if you look at it, it is like a cool tactic because we did the pass check here uh, because this wasn't the only important, you know, piece to like get off of this 
uh, well, this wasn't do, doing any of the defense. We waited until the bishop was no longer defending, uh, and then we checked, uh, and we set ourselves up to check up here, um, like the next turn if we couldn't travel immediately, and then queen left, and then we got the we got the check, so that was good. Okay, let me catch up. Let me catch up. Um, let me catch up in chat because uh, I, I was hyper focused there for for a hot minute.